Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Salt Water Fishing video. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back as always. It is like 7.30 in the morning and I'm already done for fishing for this trip. But I started really early this morning when it was kind of dark. So if you have noticed you're not subscribed yet or following any of the social media pages for Bama Saltwater, like on Facebook, TikTok, and all that, don't forget to go do that. Y'all sit back, relax, and let's get into some fishing. Oh, first fish this morning. There we go. On the jig. Let's see what it is. The tide's coming in super fast. So, it's a decent fish though. Come on, get in close. Got to fight against all that current. Oh, nice Spanish mackerel. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice fish. Y'all check that out. Beautiful Spanish mackerel. So it's still dark, but look at that that is the target species that's what i came out here this morning for on the white half ounce bucktail jig so i'm going to bleed this one out and throw it in the cooler beautiful fish Woo. now it's still dark but these things do have some teeth you have to watch out for so usually what i do though is i'll cut right underneath the gill let them bleed out and then i bury them in my cooler on ice but he actually just spit up a glass minnow look at that half of a glass minnow and if you look at my lure it almost looks identical to it so match the hatch can't go wrong doing that but let's cast back out my leader's still good try to catch some more that was a good one too i was out trolling the other day and getting nothing but small ones so i'll take that size any day of the week but all i'm doing is casting out just a nice decent cast up current let my bait sink and then i'm twitch 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 you know, I just keep on twitching a little bit and then let it sink again. And then once it sinks kind of down to the bottom, give it another twitch. And that's all I'm doing back to me. We're actually coming up to a high tide. So all this water is coming in from the Gulf, heading really fast into the pass. So it's a strong tidal movement, strong current. So once my bait gets kind of that way, I start reeling it in because it doesn't look as natural that way. Oh, just missed one. Usually when I miss one, I let it drop again. Oh, and it just came back for it, see? Oh. <laughs> That's a ladyfish, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure, but good lord, they fight hard in this current. <laughs> Come on. Dad gum. We got old Fred the heron hanging out with us this morning. Dang, these things pull pretty hard in the current. <sighs> Come on. Get over here. See dropping it when you get a strike usually works pretty good. But yeah, that's a ladyfish, I think. Yep. Not quite what we want. Still fun though. That's a it's a decent sized ladyfish. So I'm gonna let this joker go. I don't need it. I don't need them. They're not that good to eat. But they are really fun to catch. Big old eyes, they jump. They don't really have teeth, they just have a very sandpaper type mouth. But they're acrobatic jokers. Little tarpon pretty much. <laughs> and he is not doing too good but i think this water will get them back down <laughs> Woo, that is fun a few casts this morning and my white jig is already red that's when you know it's already a good morning so those ladyfish do not have teeth but they do have pretty abrasive mouths so i normally fill my leader i am using 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and about 18 inches of it and then i am using a 4000 size shimano with 20 pound braid and a seven foot medium heavy fast action St. Croy rod. Someone cast this jig back out and see what else we can hook up. All right. Oh, there's another fish. See, 
and I get a missed strike, I normally drop it and twitch it back up again. It's trying to come back for it. Hopefully we can catch some more Spanish mackerel. That was a good one. Boat's got some small engines on it. Oh, oh yeah. Fish on again. <laughs> I hope that's a Spanish. I don't see it jumping yet, so I think it might be. And its head is shaking. Come on, catching fish before the sun comes up. You can't get any better than that. It is. <laughs> nice Spanish mackerel again. Y'all check that out. What an awesome fish. Target species. The Spanish, easiest way to tell, lift up that top dorsal fin. If it's got all that black on it and that white coming down, that's a Spanish mackerel. That's what we're after right there. So those are perfect size. You're allowed 15 a person in Alabama with no minimum size limit. Someone throw that one on ice and get another cast out. Check it out sun hasn't even come up yet and we already have two spanish in the cooler that's how i like it oh another fish come on this one doesn't feel as big unless it's just swimming towards me it might have just been swimming towards me but i made a cast out immediately after we have another fish on yep spanish mackerel mm, boom again <laughs> check it out yeah that's what i'm talking about i'm telling you you don't want to waste any time when they're fired up get your jig out there get your lure out there because they swim around in schools and that means the school's hanging around so go and get this one in the cooler and get another cast out we already have three on deck that is awesome now when fishing for these jokers make sure you have a towel handy they have ultra small scales that stick to everything see my hands that's all their little scales so I like to have a towel, if you can, try to wet it. It'll help mitigate the scales. When they're fired up and in schools, you don't want to waste any more time getting your bait back out. So here we go. It'll be a good day if I don't have any more hair left on this bucktail jig. Y'all know I love using these jigs. If you watch my other videos, you see me use it a lot. Now when you go a while without getting a bite, don't get discouraged. Fish travel in schools chasing this schools of glass minnows and small pogies and elwops oh. <laughs> old blue herring got scared away by the water <laughs> this is extremely fun and literally anybody can do it if you're down here my truck is parked no more than 30 feet away from me fishing along the seawall no boat no kayak and still catching quality fish so that's actually the best type of fishing in my opinion simple effective and something anybody can do. So that's when you know you had a good day because this is a brand new Spro half ounce bucktail jig. Check out all the fur on it. And after a bunch of fish, <laughs> most of the fur is gone, but it seems to still work. But I just wanted to show you the difference, which you can still keep on using it. But check out the profile difference. Look at all the bucktails gone. <laughs> what a successful morning. I am extremely happy with my catch. The bite died fairly quickly. It was literally right at daybreak. The sun hadn't even come over the horizon yet. It was just dawn where you had that loom coming over. Beautiful time of morning catching these fish. I'm about to head in, but I just want y'all to check out these. These are extremely pretty fresh fish. I love Spanish mackerel because you can catch them on light tackle. You don't need any huge specialty gear for them. They're very abundant. They fight hard. Everything about them is cool. And they actually taste really, really good as well. Nice, firm, flaky white meat. So I am back home and I'm actually gonna make Spanish mackerel ceviche. So everyone has their own recipe for it. I'm just gonna kind of keep it simple, but I need to clean these fish first, fillet them up and cube them. So right now they are bleeding out on ice. All you do, make a nice small incision underneath that gill. Usually I do this before I head out and then let them soak in this ice so that meat stays firm and fresh. And the knife I'm using today is actually my Sword 7 inch Flex Filet. Great company to work with, fast shipping, super sharp knife. And I thoroughly enjoy using their knives and working with Sword. So if y'all wanna go check them out, they'll be linked down in the description below. But I'm just gonna fillet these up. So let's grab our first fish. If you don't wanna see this part, you can skip now and get to the 
cooking portion. If not, we're gonna get right into it. This is an educational video just to show you for how to prepare your fresh catch to cook. It's not going to waste. It is educational. So I have to say that for you to catch and cook sometimes. This is a fast way of doing it. So I cut right behind that pectoral fin like always, flip my knife sideways and run it right along just like that. Very easy, you really don't miss too much meat doing it that way. And I kind of leave the tail on just a little bit. See, I leave a tag in on the tail. So we're just gonna get this filet right off the skin. Sharp knives help a lot. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there are some bones. So if you accidentally left bones in there, just trim them out. And then you have these pin bones right here in the middle along with this bloodline. See the bloodline? So that is one side of the mackerel filleted. I'm literally gonna do the same thing on the other side and the rest of these fish. And we'll have some fresh Spanish mackerel meat for our ceviche. Okay, so that fish is cleaned up. I took it upstairs and prepped my ingredients. I diced the fish up into just little half inch squares here. It doesn't have to be very technical. I literally had the ingredients in the house. I didn't have to go out and buy anything, so this is what I'm using. But you wanna cut your fish pretty small, and then the rest of your ingredients you wanna to cut to match the size of your fish. So I do have tomato, some diced onion, cilantro, chopped up garlic, and one and a half lemons. Obviously, one whole lemon, and then another one cut in half. And then salt and pepper. So ceviche is actually raw fish. It's technically cooked by the acidity of the citrus that you choose. You can use lime, lemon, a mix of lime and lemon. You can also use some oranges as well, a little bit of orange, but I'm just using right now what I have in the house is lemon. So we're gonna start putting this together. So here we go, add our tomatoes. It's kind of a one to one to one. So you don't wanna overdo it with too many of each ingredient. So tomato, our diced red onion, which you could use sweet onion too, but that red onion seems to pair well with the citrus. And then our cilantro, there we go. I left it kind of whole. I didn't chop it too much. And then I'm gonna add some of our garlic in there. So I don't wanna do too much because you don't want one thing overpowering the other. And we're gonna add a little bit of this fresh ground black pepper to taste before we put it in the fridge. The salt will go on before we eat it. I'm not gonna put it on as it's marinating in the fridge. We're gonna go ahead and do the main, most important ingredient for ceviche is your citrus. And in this case, I'm using lemon. So we're gonna squeeze these lemons. Make sure not to get in your eye. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> like that, don't, don't do what I did. So here we go. That's the most important ingredient right here, aside from your fish. So I'm gonna do one more lemon. This is the last one. It smells pretty good already. But that citrus, once again, is actually what's gonna cook the fish, the acidity in your lemon or lime or orange. All right, now we get to mix this joker up. You wanna get it nice, evenly mixed. And that's why I like a one-to-one -one ratio. So when you do take a bite of it, you get a little bit of all the ingredients. You just want to make sure your fish is thoroughly coated. And if you need to add some more ingredients of each one, you can. I'll probably end up adding a little bit more cilantro. There we go. And a little bit more garlic. Everything's to taste. Mix it up really good. You want it all coated up. All right. So now we have all our ingredients put together. We have it mixed really nice. We're gonna cover this up and set it in our refrigerator for 30 minutes, exactly. 30 minutes gives it enough time to marinate, absorb all the juices, firm up, but it doesn't necessarily dry it out or get too lemony. So, and then we'll set our salt on the side because this is all to taste after it marinates in the fridge. 30 minutes. So I'll see y'all then. All right, y'all, so it's been 30 minutes. Uh, obviously in different clothes, I got cleaned up. It did rain a little bit out here, but perfect amount of time. We pulled out our covered ceviche. 
and it actually looks pretty good. So let's go give it a smell real quick. Ooh, that actually smells really good too. It smells like some really fresh salsa. And you can see how that meat turned white. It's normally pink when you actually, it's like raw, but you see what that acidity did from the lemon. It turned it white, so it technically cooked it, theoretically. So what I have here, everybody does different. Ideally, if I went to the store and bought all the ingredients, I would like the big round tostadas, but I do not have any. We do have some Tostito scoops, just some tortilla chips here that will work just fine. So I'm gonna move some of this ceviche into our serving size, and then we're gonna give it a sample. I'm gonna give it a mix some more. Uh-oh, don't wanna lose any. And then, remember what I said about the salt. So I will take just a little bit, there we go, of some fresh salt, mix it up. Now let's get a nice, even scoop of that. Put it in our bowl. I hope it's good, because I made a lot of it. <laughs> so this will be my first time trying my own homemade stuff. But here we go. Let's take a scoop. Make sure we get a tomato on there too. And let's try a bite. Homemade, fresh ceviche. Fish literally was swimming about three hours ago. Never frozen. Let's try it. Mmm. Great flavor. Definitely an interesting texture, being that fish isn't cooked all the way. You know, it's just cooked by lemon. It's not cooked with heat. I'm gonna try another bite. The lemon is really good. The cilantro, the ingredients, all taste great mixed together. Like I said, it smells like a good salsa, and that's pretty much what it tastes like too. So you don't even, really, if you close your eyes, you really wouldn't know that you're eating fish. You would think that you're just eating some homemade salsa so let's give it another bite there's a the fish mm. it's actually really good i was kind of nervous that it wasn't going to turn out that good you know spanish mackerel is a pretty oily fish but that is extremely fresh and i'll make that again you know i made some sashimi the other day that uh, <laughs> it was not good at all. The soy sauce tasted great, but it just was not good. This right here, I actually like, so. Can't get any fresher than that, oh my goodness. I'm pretty impressed how it came out. So if y'all wanna make this yourself, I highly suggest it. Save your Spanish, bleed it out. Just make sure you maintain your fish and keep it fresh on ice. Rinsed it well and made some really fresh ceviche. So I wish y'all were here to try it. I'm gonna close out this video so we can take another bite. If you have not subscribed yet, don't forget to go hit that subscribe button down below. Keeps the channel growing, allows you to keep up with some awesome content like this. Don't forget, I do have a Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok too. Y'all go follow that as well. Get to see some cool pictures, share some info. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.